Hey people, thank you for checking out the video. This topic I've actually covered on countless live streams during Q&A sessions, but apparently I need to make a full-fledged video on it and I am happy to do so. Talking about beard products and their ingredients and the science behind it is an absolute passion of mine. And I'm going to begin with a direct quote that I have from a chemist, a cosmetic chemist with over 30 years experience, and he told me, no. Dimethicone is not ruining anyone's beard. It is a perfectly fine and effective ingredient for beard hairs. Now, silicones have gotten the same kind of wrap and same path as sulfates. People hear something and then it spreads like wildfire. The problem is we have too many mom blogs and word of mouth warriors out there that don't have any real research, evidence, or facts behind what they're saying. Now, silicones do not belong in beard oils, beard balms, and beard butters. However, they can be an amazing ingredient in beard water-based products such as conditioner, leave-in conditioner, and washes. Of course, just like anything else, use it in moderation. You can overdo it with all of those products, with the silicone ingredients. You also have good silicones and bad silicones. But when done properly, silicones can help you comb your beard easier to have less damage. It can help the strength of those beard hairs. It can soften the beard hairs. It can reduce the frizz and give you more control and health. Tons and tons of benefits for this. So if you guys want to learn more about this topic, please stay tuned or check out my sources down in the description. My name is Dan C. Bearded. My subscribers call me the trusted teacher for all things beard related because of exact videos just like this. And if you you enjoy this I do encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel Just like anything else in life, moderation is key and it's no different when it comes to using silicone ingredients in your water-based products. I'm going to throw up in one of the corners here, I don't know which one, one of these days I'm going to learn and really get it down, but one of these two corners, there's going to be a video that pops up and this is an older video that I made that is dedicated to saying you can over-condition your beard. And this was made during a time when people were saying, hey, co-wash your beard six days a week, only wash it once. Or co-wash your beard seven days a week, every day, because it doesn't strip natural oils and it's going to clean your beard. And I had no problem saying, eh, hold up, that's not quite true and it's going to cause long-term effects. So this is something that I have really been talking about, researching, and putting into application for quite a while now. Now something else that's just like everything else in life, when it comes to this topics of using silicone ingredients on your beard, on your hair, essentially in water-based products, there are people on both sides of the fence. If you do a search, you're going to find articles all over the place, and I encourage you, do your own searches, do your own research, make up your own mind, that's going to be really important, but sources matter. You want to find valid sources out there, usually you want to look for .govs or medical journals, those are going to have some of the best research, those are going to have some of the best results, and uh, oftentimes they're not the easiest to read, but if you can put that work in, it really does pay off. So this video today is just based on my thoughts. My, my thoughts from years of experience with creating products, using products, researching products, and taking classes on how to make those products. Yes, I'm on a beard nerd level where I've taken actual classes on creating water-based products for your beard. When it comes to silicones, there are good silicones and bad silicones. The focus of this video today is going to be on emotimethicone. The reason why is that ingredient is infamous for having lazy misconceptions. So many people are wrong and have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to that ingredient, whether it's because they don't know how to read real research or they just put it into general classifications. But let's break it down real easy and get to that first. There are two classifications when it comes to silicones that are used in water-based products. You have the water-soluble silicones and you have the water-insoluble silicones. Now over here, the water-soluble are generally regarded as great ingredients because they break down in water and they rinse away really easily. And then the water-insoluble ones do not break down as easily in water. And so some people assume that's bad. It's going to cause buildup. 
Well, that's not actually true. That's not how it really works. Our hair, our hairs, <laughs> that's how my son Maddox talks, our hairs have a negative charge. This emotimethicone in water has a positive charge. Opposites attract, which is good. We wanted our conditioner to do its job. Now where it really kicks in is all emotimethicone in water, any strand, every part of that, that ingredient has a positive charge. So if you have a hair that already has a layer of conditioning agent, a emotimethicone on it, it's going to repel all other positive charges. Just imagine that you have a magnet on there and think about bringing the same pole or the same side of a magnet, it's going to push it away. So that prevents buildup. Buildup means that you have things stacking up on each other. They are building up. You may only have one layer of a emotimethicone when it comes to hairs and that's wonderful. And we want our conditioners to do our job. I'll break that down a little bit more in the video, but if it goes on your hair and it automatically automatically breaks down in water, how effective is that ingredient? So why use silicone ingredients in beard conditioners? I'm going to give you two major reasons. The first one, it is going to add a layer of slip when it comes to combing your beard. There are tons of guys out there, many watching right now, that when they get out of the shower, they have resistance, they have tangles, they have snags when they comb their beard, and that's causing all sorts of problems, mainly premature shedding and breakage. They're pulling hairs out from the base before they're naturally ready to go, or they're just straight up ripping them in half and having that breakage. Well, when you use the proper ingredients in the proper products, it allows you to go through and just glide through your beard like butter. I know tons of guys that have reached out after using a quality conditioner for the first time and they're like, oh my gosh, this is a game changer and it really is. And the second reason is even more important. These proper silicone ingredients, especially emotimethicone, are experts at grabbing on to damaged hair. The more damaged the hair is, the more negative that surface charge is. So that positive emotimethicone is going to target where the damage is and grab on. And essentially what it's doing is it's going to do its best job to mimic that healthy layer that it's missing. And that is so, so valuable to us because beards are damaged. Most beards have damage to varying levels from things like the UV rays from the sun to things like stress, health, grooming, and just overall life. Do you have a five-month-old daughter who's grabbing your beard all day? Is your beard exposed to wear and tear or chemicals at work? Many of us have this going because it's hanging from our face. Are you really into grilling and smoking some meats? Well, that heat is going to damage your beard. These ingredients do an amazing job of protecting that beard hair. But are silicone safe? Yes. I'm going to talk specifically again about emotimethicone. If you find any scale on the internet whatsoever, any of them, usually you can find things on both sides of the fence. Emotimethicone is going to have the very best possible safety rating. If it's a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the, the least harmful and 10 being the most dangerous, every scale out there is going to give it a one. If you find something that gives words, it's going to say no risk. And that can come from federal government sources, that can come from nonprofits, and that can come from medical journals. Check them out there. I'll throw a few in the description down below. 100% safe for you and especially for your beard. Experiment and listen to your beard. You know your beard best. Different types of beers require different types of ingredients, and that concept is no stranger to this channel. I talk often about gray beards, how they are missing that outer layer of protection, and they need to go about the products, the care, the grooming in slightly different ways. They should likely be looking for conditioners and washes that have these silicone ingredients. The more curly, the more textured, and the more damaged your hair is, your beard is, you should be looking for those silicone ingredients. So I hope today that you guys enjoyed this content, you learned something, and please, if you have any questions on this, leave it down below, shoot me a message, my description has my contact information. I am glad to help out anybody that actually wants to learn. So one more time guys, thank you for watching. My name is Dancy Bearded. As always, stay bearded and hey, stay positive.